Hey, what's up everybody? So I wanted to just talk about scattering uh, objects that you are importing like rocks or foliage or just whatever and it's coming in in a single file and how do you get those things out um, and onto um, a bunch of points. So first let me just drop down a geometry here and let me get a file sop and we're gonna load in, I have these rocks, these stones. So now this FBX is basically bringing in um, all of these objects here now they're obviously massive so let's drop a match size uh, and this is going to center our points and then let's just scale them to fit um, and so there scale down to fit um, a size of one okay so now the important part here is that these prims have an attribute called name uh, and we are going to use that now if for some reason you don't have that i can show you um, let me just load in just one of these real quick. Uh, and so this, uh, does not have it, um, it has the prim group, but it doesn't have it. So what you would actually need to do is hit name and this is creating that name attribute. And then we can name this whatever we want to name it. So let's just rock. Uh, and so now this name attribute, let me show you what it's doing. So if we go alt, uh, left bracket and we change we go alt 8 and then this gives us our geometry spreadsheet uh, you can see that we have this name attribute and it's named that rock uh, each one of those primitives uh, rock we can we also can change this to our point attribute and that would give it our name so basically this is identifying an attribute that this is rock right so if we wanted to bring another one uh, another file we can do that and it would also name it rock, but we want this to be rock two. Uh, there it is. So now we have two different names, right? So basically what's happening when you bring in these objects and they have uh, this name attribute, it's already doing that for you, which is great. If for some reason it's not doing that, um, let me show you how to actually get that on there. So let's do a clean SOP here and we're just gonna delete remove all attributes and groups right so we're left with just the p value what we could do is use a connectivity sop and so basically the connectivity takes um whole geometry right connected geometry um it has to be a solid piece and what it's going to do is based on the point connectivity it's going to create an attribute uh called class which here we can see class and then it's going to create an integer um, for each one of, on each one of the points, identifying that all of those points are connected together. So one, two, three, and four. So we have four of these uh, connected pieces here, right? Uh, we can also change this to name because that's gonna be used later. So just name, okay? And we wanna make sure it's in integer. There's the name, it's on the point. Match size, there it goes, it's on the point. Now, the other thing that we could do is we can pack this, um, which will be great for optimizing later. So if we pack this and we use the name attribute name, um, this is yelling at me because it's currently on the support string attributes. If we uncheck the packed segments here and we change this connectivity to primitive. Uh, so this is going to be based on the primitive space cheese, the center. You can see it there. Um, this is now, once we pack this, you can see we have five objects based on their name attribute, right? Um, there's, these are just multiple ways of sort of getting this name onto geometry, which is going to be important. I'll, and I'll show you why in just a second. Um, the one thing, let's match the size this again. So there we go. It's, it's small. Okay. Now the thing about this is that we don't have that name attribute anymore. And in the pack, we have to make sure that we copy over the name attribute, okay? So this is on our primitives, but this isn't going to work um, on a, so let's drop a grid here. So this grid, let's just, let's just make it small. Let's oh, oh, two, and let's just go three by three, okay? There we go. So, oh, I, I guess we need actual rows and columns. So there we go, 10 by 10. Now, if we copy the points, okay, drop this down, and we have the 
geometry to copy and the target points. So those are our target points and these are, and that's our, what we get is each one of these points, uh, each one of these objects is copied. So it's basically all five of these, right? Uh, zero, one, two, three, four, uh, all five of these objects are copied onto each and every single point. Now, if we use the piece attribute name, it's still not doing it. And that's because this needs to be a point attribute, not a prim attribute. So if we attribute promote the name attribute, and we take the from a primitive and we go name and we go to point and then we bring it in here. And now we have the 500 objects and it's still not doing it. I know it's like, what is happening? The thing is, is that we need an attribute from pieces. And this is, this is going to be our saving grace here. So now the attribute from pieces, what it requires is a point cloud and then the geometry library. Okay. So we still want to keep that promote, um, the point cloud, which we're going to use the, uh, the grid as our point class. So it'll use the incoming points and then the geometry library. So this is going to create a name attribute on each one of the points. So C zero, one, two, three, four, zero, one, two, three, four. And it's basically just cycling through them. So now if we take this as our point cloud and we bring this onto the target points and copy it over, what you'll see is that now we have the geometry copying, copying over based on that name attribute and it's cycling through each one of these, right? So this is how we get the individual pieces onto geometry. And if that's all you need, you can stop here. Um, this shows you how to cycle it and offset, offset it cycle. You could do noise. Um, so this basically, you can just create a noise make it small, make it big. And this just creates a, a variation here. Now, the next thing that we could do here is a scatter and align. So let me just move this over. Now scatter and align is going to take a, um, is going to take your scatter surface. Okay. So first let's grab this, this grid. And what it's going to do is create points. Uh, it's kind of like the scatter stop, but, but this is creating a scatter with um, orientation um, and everything else. And what we want to do is we're scattering the points on the geometry surface that's incoming and the minimum radius, we want to bring this down. And so you can see that it's generating these points over the grid surface, right? So if we press E to flag this grid, you can see it's creating those points. So a minimum and maximum, if we keep bringing this down, it's going to, it's going to bring us more points. Now you can increase the coverage and this increases the amount of points. You can do this by density, which is, which is nice. Uh, and you can increase this density scale as much as you want. And it's going to scatter them and you can see that they're relaxing around each other. And in this point generation, you can, you can turn down a relaxation or increase it if you want, um, a bit more of a uniform grid. The other thing that you could do is you can do this coverage scale by attribute. So if you have another attribute that's coming in, you can bring that in, but I'll save that for something else. Okay. So this scatter and align, we now have these points here. Let me actually reduce the density scale. So we have just a few points here. We still need to get the name attribute on here because we don't have it. We have the normal and orientation position and P scale, which is, which is great. So what we want to do is make sure that we get these points here. And so now if we look at these points, they now have this name, this name integer attribute on, on it, right? So there's our name and it's one, two, three, four, one, two, three, four. And so great. We have this name attribute. Um, I'm going to, I'm just going to do instead of this, Instead of a noise, I'm just going to hit the random. There we go. And so there we now have this name. There we go. And there's the name. There's the name. And it's bringing in this variation of zero, one, two, three, fours. You can see zero, one, two, three, and four, right? So we got this. So now when we copy the points, what we get is an oriented and um, aligned 
to the geometry uh, scattered objects that are packed onto this. So we have 33 packed geos that are on this. Now you can also take this a step further, which is where this scattering line is actually kind of cool. So there's a few modes that you can do. So we can add attributes to the existing or scatter points around constraint points. Now this second input is your constraint point cloud. Okay. So if we just alt drag and duplicate this, so we have the surface, which we're still taking that grid surface, but then what we're going to use is these constraint point clouds. Okay. So this scatter around the point cloud. So what it's doing is it's taking the position of this and then it's scattering points around that, right? So if we increase the scale here and we, let me see, let's decrease this the density and we can increase the density. So you can see that it's scattering little points all around uh, the individual points that we first brought in. And so the next thing that you could do is take this and bring it to set it up as our point cloud. So that way we're getting those attribute, um, that name attribute on the, on the pieces. And when, when we call it, copy the points, it's giving us a random scatter of individual pieces around the, uh, just onto all the points that we scattered. And, and that is just a really quick way of getting all your different geometry in uh, and on scattered on two points in Houdini. I hope that helps someone. Um, if you want, there's a more in-depth tutorial that I found um, by Simon Houdini. And so he goes through a more complex version of going through this the same method. But I just wanted to give you this uh, real quick and I hope that it helps you out. See ya.